this uh, the BCS tractor is a nice tractor for somebody back if you want to put gardens in backyards and you can't get a big tractor in there or uh, we have a garden in front of the Palmer bag I do everything with that with this tractor and it's a small area probably from here no further than the end of that across and I have on two sides I have commodities on one side where I have soybeans cotton uh, sunflowers peanuts hay grazer and field corn and then on the other side I have vegetables I have sweet potatoes uh, tomatoes cucumbers uh, okra all that kind of stuff on the opposite side and then every year I flip flop it and put uh, the, the vegetables on the other side and the commodities on the opposite side but uh, I do all the work with this tractor and uh, if you haven't seen this uh, rotary plow if you actually have to plow that will actually till uh, will actually plow sod soil and it makes a bed it'll make a bed probably I don't know 12 12 or 14 inches high but it makes a bed too high to use the mulch, layer, the mulch machine because that's only three foot wide. And uh, what I did, I went through there with a hoe or, you know, usually I use a rake or something and just make a bed so it's not flat. The first year I did it, I just laid them flat and I, I had waterlogged. My peppers didn't do well, but when I've done the bed, it's a lot better. Now this ground is much more mellow than my ground in Oklahoma City. I got red clay. so. Actually, if I didn't, have, if I hadn't have raked this up, it still would have been a little bit of a bed because of the tractor tires, just because it's so mellow here. But we're going to start this up and uh, kind of get this plastic set in place and lay it. And I hadn't really tried to, uh, uh, I don't know, I may have to make some adjustments, but it's not perfected. I mean, I think some company could probably perfect it a little better, but it will, it does work and does a pretty good job. This thing here is just a deal that, like all farmers that create stuff, I had this, uh, I told my brother what I wanted, he welded this together. It's just a weight with some pointers on it, and it just helps hold that plastic in place uh, until I get to the other end. And then I just throw a little dirt on the end of here. Oh, uh, and I, this thing does have a um, drip roll attachment. It's on that wheelbarrow, but I didn't have the right side drip tape, and I didn't know Irrigation Mart had a roll, and he just went over and got it just now. <laughs> but you could actually lay your drip at the same time you're laying your plastic. But I, what I've been doing, because I had this wide roll that wouldn't work, I've just been laying the drip tape ahead. And this really doesn't take a lot, or much time to do, so that's usually what I usually do. One thing uh, he failed to mention is you really need the soil tilled up well, right? I mean, you need a good till. You don't need to have a lot of clods in this or a lot of plant debris in order for this little little uh, layer to work. Yeah, and a little moisture in the soil would help too. And it's we, unfortunately we don't have quite enough in, in this, but it should work. The thing about this, the nice about this this uh, BCS tractor is that the handlebars go all the way around, so it goes backwards and forward the same speed as either way. The only thing when you put the handlebars around, you have to remember that your reverse deal is opposite. You, know, you wind up running into yourself a few times until you figure that out. But uh, so like when I pull up here and get this all set up, I like for my handlebars at that end. But then I, it's when I'm putting land this on this particular implement, I like my handlebars here, but a little bit to the side so I can walk beside the machine, but also put a little weight on the back of it to kind of make it work right. And then you just put, pull these things, these, one of these is the PTO, which we don't need on this. And the other one is the, the gear. It's got three gears and three speeds. And so uh, I think I'm ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start it up and see what we got.
Yeah, by me using the rake, you can see it, it's a pretty nice little raised bed. And uh, like here where it didn't get covered up, I'll just take the shovel and throw a little more dirt on the edges. But the main thing is you got the plastic scratched. <coughs> and once it's scratched, then you don't, got a, you don't have a wind problem. Uh-oh. You don't have a wind problem, so even though we got some edges that show, I'll just take a shovel and, and throw some dirt on that. But the plastic is scratched. And by me using the rake, you got a nice little raised bed. And as I was saying now, first year or two I used this, I just laid it flat. But I had problems with peppers and stuff because they, I would run water through the drip line and it would just, uh, it wouldn't drain well. And the peppers didn't do well. So once I start raking up a little raised bed, it takes about, I don't know, maybe another 15 minutes. And, uh, it made a world of a difference. So, uh, uh, and then sometimes what I'll, at, at that, that garden at work, I'll, I'll put some mushroom compost and some chicken litter and stuff, mix it into the bed when I'm raking it in. So, because my, uh, that soil up there is pretty poor, but as I've been working on it for the last few years, it's getting a little bit better and better. So, and what, the other thing about this is that it's a space saver. You would only be able to get uh, at the most two rows in here with the real full size tractor. You could put three, you may almost could put four just according to how close you want to walk between your rows. But you could put three in here real easy. So it's just a space saving uh, tool and it's, it ain't for somebody that's gonna want, if you wanna try to do an acre of land or mm acre and a half, but if you got a backyard that you want to grow some vegetables and there's people that that done that, you know, with tomatoes and peppers and stuff and sold, sold stuff and made money off of it because it doesn't take a lot of space for that stuff. But if you're going to grow watermelons or something, you probably need more space. I usually try to run my drip tape down the middle and, and what I'll do, I'll turn the water on ahead of time before I'm planting and I'll usually see it and I'll, I'll put a, a tomato here, here you know, zigzag down through there. Uh, my, my dad always said you can get a little bit more on a crooked road than a straight, so. Okay. <laughs> said from the master. So he's offsetting plants so he can get a little bit closer, but it's basically still uh, the idea is not to, not to overcrowd your plants. Okay, I'll go get the tractor and move okay. around. One thing I might mention, the reason we're, he already mentioned uh, why he's putting that ridge, it helps make a tighter fit for the plastic. If you're going to put plastic on a bed, it needs to be tight. If it's got air gaps under it, it's not going to conduct heat to the bed. You're not going to get as much warm up, as much heat accumulation. So consider that. You can actually, uh, you know, take a little time, play with this thing, and you can get the adjustments a lot better. Yep. The I think the other nicest thing about this piece of equipment <laughs> is that uh, rotary plow right behind him. It it makes a really nice bed. Uh, I use that for my sweet potatoes because it makes a bed. I mean, it's probably 12, 14 inches high, and uh, and it also will plow through sod. So that is a uh, and you know, because you would think on something like this, if you're trying to initially break up the soil, you wouldn't be able to do it, but you can with that little plow there. Thank you, Micah. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. This guy's sweating. He's been working. <laughs> <laughs>